welcome back to the 2020 Hack the NAB show. As many of you know, the 2020 National Association of Broadcasters show was canceled in Las Vegas, Nevada. Usually a time where we get to meet all of our colleagues and peers. Sad to say, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has shut down that conference, but we're still bringing you over 20 interviews with streaming experts. And I have with me the lead engineer of PTZ Optics, Matthew Davis. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty swell. How are you doing, Paul? Not too bad. I'm a little hot with this hoodie on, but I'm keeping it on because I'm a hacker and I'm, 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 holding, I'm holding tight to that. I was wondering, I mean, I've spent a little time in that studio. It can get a little toasty in there. It is hot, but I don't want to expose my, I haven't been able to get a haircut in about five weeks, so I don't want to show that either. So anyway, Matt Davis is here. He's been working tirelessly to bring new products to the PTZ Optics camera line for NAB. And I felt so bad for you, Matt, when uh, I, there was nobody to show them to. And I said, let's do, let's do a show here, Matt, and talk about what you've been working on. Woohoo! Look at that pretty camera. So this camera, I love the metal casing that you built for this, Matt. It's super durable, and there's no moving parts, but it still has features that a PTZ camera has. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we've tried to span the gamut of bringing some new tech in while giving people stuff that they're familiar with. Uh, you know, you don't want to stray too far from the norm or else yeah, people get a little wary of what you're building. Now, we were just on a call with um, Andrew Cross from New Tech, and we were talking about your brand new NDI webcam, which is really the only NDI webcam available today, making the price of an NDI video source dramatically less expensive than even the least, the lower cost option. This is a $499 webcam with something called electronic pan tilt zoom. Exactly. Um, so one of the nice things that you can do with these cameras uh, they have a 4K image sensor, but you can let the camera do the hard work of actually scaling and zooming into that content. So you've got a lot of extra pixels to work with. Uh, if you're willing to have a 720 image, well, you can get a 3X digital zoom out of that thing and, and you're not noticing any degradation in quality. Um, so that's really what we've designed here is a camera that allows you to take advantage of pan, tilt, and zoom functions uh, without actually having moving parts. Uh, and one of the neat things that comes along with that is if you bring in a stream at 720 uh, versus a 4K stream, that's a lot easier for your PC to handle. So you can do a lot of things without having to handle all this extra processing on your computer and, and do a lot more magical things with your production software. Well, I'm so glad you mentioned that because we have forgotten to talk about that important part of these cameras which is the fact that the processing you decided to do in the camera itself let's take a look at the io really quickly just to kind of let everybody know what's going on with this device so yeah. you've got uh ethernet i see yep so we've got ethernet uh your rtsp there's the ndi option uh and then you might notice what looks a little bit strange there's an sdi one and an sdi two so what's really going on here, um, both of these are able to output 1080-30. On this camera specifically, there is no 4K output. However, SDI-1 always presents you with a full view. SDI-2 can be an ET PTZ view. If I got that reversed, feel free to correct me, Paul. Oh, yeah, one, one, one is the wide view, and we'll show that in just a moment. Okay. So you get two feeds off the same camera, so you have the ability to maintain an overview while still pan, tilt, and zooming around, taking advantage of a 4K image sensor. So something that we're, we've got to show off, because it's really going to help people understand this, and then a very wide-angle lens on oh, here. Yeah. This is a 4K lens? Uh, so... It's a 108 degree field of view, I believe. Uh, it's a 4K image sensor, but 1080, 30 outputs. Gotcha. Well, let's go ahead and show this because I just, I just got to show this in a couple different varieties. So the cool thing about it is that it's got a really wide angle field of view, but it's totally able to act like an, a PTZ camera. And it also gives you two cameras in one, if you think about it, because you've got two SDI outputs. So one for that wide angle view of your telemedicine or healthcare or studio, 
Here's that wide angle. And then you've got your second SDI output that can be used just like a PTZ camera. So I wanted to show this off really quickly, Matt. Um, maybe I will, um, it looks like I'm at full zoom there. So I'll zoom out. So that this has, how much X optical zoom is it? Or digital? Uh, there, oh, so you can go up to an 8X digital zoom on there. Um, what you're gonna get when you do your first 2X zoom, you're getting like a 1080 image. When you get to your 3x zoom, you're getting to a 720 image, and it keeps going to lower resolutions, really, as you continue to zoom down. There's some wonderful charts and tools available on the website uh, that can help, you know, illustrate this further if you kind of want to put your own fingers on it and, and touch it a little bit. Um, but, yeah, the, like these demos that Paul's showing currently really do a nice job of showcasing uh, how you really have this one overall view that it provides all the time, and yet the ability, depending on the the zoom limit the digital zoom that you apply uh you can also then zoom in on much smaller details i see so what i just did there because i was wondering why why am i not able to zoom super far in so you can set up zoom limits in the menu and i noticed that there was a zoom limit set at one to three x and the reason why is because if you're using a 720p um system and you want to limit the output to just be um you know 720p and not go further that's where that that limit comes in um so i'm going to move it to 8x because i really think for what we're doing it's 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 nicer to show that um that 8x digital so mike let me see that again i'm going to set a couple presets now matt i just noticed it has auto framing built in yes uh so this uh, similar to our uh, huddle cam uh, webcam that you were just showing off that's NDI. This also features auto framing capabilities. Um, so if you were utilizing it in a small space and you just wanted it to constantly kind of track an individual or a group of people, it will constantly try to frame them. So it, it again, can take a little bit of a load off the production uh, when you enable features like that. Very, very cool. Let me um, go ahead and, so when auto framing is on, you don't have control over the camera. So I'm gonna turn that off for a minute here. And I just wanna show a couple PTZ pre, uh, movements with this camera. So let's do a preset. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit set one. My preset one will be this camera. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set one over here, set two. And then I just wanna show. So basically those are presets. I'll do one more that's maybe a little bit more zoomed out. And again, no moving parts. Michael keeps showing this. Two SDI, it's good, but two SDI outputs and a power over ethernet port. I mean, what more could you ask for? And actually your example there where you're showing both shows off a really um, unique aspect when you think about using this camera. When you were showing it, you had it split. There we go, SDI one and SDI two. Really, if you think about, you're probably doing a 1080 production here. So if you think about that might be a quarter of the screen, you're looking at what, 480? So if you were really using this for a live production or post-production, you know that you could set that down to like a 4X to 5X limit without actually losing any quality as far as the end user is going to see. Yeah, and that's the amazing part. And for from a production standpoint, if you need to be able to zoom in, I mean, think about this. And this camera, by the way, I'm trying to think of the price point here. Um, it's not that expensive. The fact that you get two SDI cameras for the price of just one of these, I think is only $599 or something like that. I can't remember. I'm trying to look yeah. it up. <laughs> Matt's going to look it up, but it's, it's definitely less than 1000 I know that. I think it's like $599 or something. I can't remember. But let me show a preset. So I'm going to go ahead. This is the iOS app. Uh, there's an iOS app. There's an Android app. There is a Kindle app. And then, of course, you can control this camera with vMix, which I'd like to show. vMix, Wirecast, OBS, all of those will work. But let me just here, I'll just hit, I'll hit a button, which we'll call a preset. Boom, goes right to the preset. So it is literally like an, a PTZ camera built in to a um, small form factor box camera like we showed with no moving parts metal durable setup 
Um, very strong here. And then I'm just going to tilt this a little bit so you guys can see. This is the NDI HX version. So that's the hacking part uh, that I wanted to talk about. But Matt, I almost forgot the most important thing of this show was the hacking side of this uh, this interview. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but we, do, we do have something cool to talk about there, I must admit. But I guess since we're into the camera real quick, let's can we give Michael the opportunity to show this camera zooming in with, with vMix? Could you do that, Mike, with yeah. one of these 20X cameras back here? Or, or do you not have anything set up over the shoulder? This should be intriguing. I think I got rid of it. All right, we'll do that. Uh, you could, might be able to use the top camera for it. No, it's not. It's fine. Uh, we'll sh we'll show that another time. Unless you want to here hit here hit this desktop capture here. Okay. All right. So Mike's gonna Mike's gonna add the, a twenty X to use for that. Um, I don't remember the the camera of it. But while while he's adding that, because what I I think it's important to show how easy it is to control this camera directly in vMix, directly in Wirecast, the TriCaster. Yes, you can use a smartphone. But having the ability to have that IP control directly in a um, in your favorite video production software just makes that one man production or that simplicity of clicking a button to move a camera just I think that much easier. So price wise, uh, you're looking at a map price for the standard unit of four ninety nine, oh. and for the NDI model eight ninety nine. Wow, very affordable. All right, Eric. Eric saying he loves VMix. Um, Dean is saying perfect for that like safety shot, and that's what a lot of people have been saying too that I've been hearing is that one SDI that's just got that safety shot, um, and it, it's very easy to set up. Um, very interesting with the auto framing. Um, so we'll have to test that. We showed that off in our last um, in our last live demo. And the price is really awesome for what you're getting. That's what people are saying. Uh, is there any busy year movement in the keyframes? No, there is not. Okay. All right. Mike's going to show us the... Uh, okay. So here we are with vMix. And now, Mike, go ahead and open up. Okay. So Mike's going to open up that camera. And he's doing a little color correction. Uh, so show the, 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 the EPTZ. Um, just open the, uh, the EPTZ, uh, camera input in vMix. I think it's like nine or something or 10. Um, and then just show how easy it is to control it with vMix. So, um, and this is the same with Wirecast and similar, uh, it's, it's that one there. So there's a little PTZ controller oh, and move it over here so they can see it a little better. And so this is like a PTZ controller and then go ahead and zoom in. And you just have complete control right through vMix. So Matt had to do a little uh, firmware updating to do that. Uh, the, in fact, I think that the first units might need to update their firmware, huh? Uh, I think we'll be good on that, actually. Okay, good. So you got the... Zoom it in, and then you can keep zooming in. Yep, as soon as you zoom it in. Now let's create a preset. All right, cool. So we're going to create a preset, and then just move it a little bit. And create another one. And that's how easy it is to just click buttons and zoom around. And those create new inputs inside of vMix. For those of you who are... Now, you do need the 4K or greater version of vMix to do this. Which is why I do think it's pretty incredible that um, you do have the ability to build stuff like this into OBS for free. So, if you're not ready to step up to vMix yet... We have OBS dockable controllers that also work using the HTTP CGI command. So talk about hacking a product there. I tried to get the OBS guys on this live stream today. But Matt, tell us about this, this hack that you have prepared for us. Yeah. Um, so this, I think this was more one of those, wow, you really did that scenario. It's like it just, whoa. Um, so... Dead Mal 5 or Dead Mouse, depending on how you want to pronounce it, um, built this amazing spinning cube. And the concept was to mount PTZ cameras to the spinning cube. And that as it spun, the cameras would keep their own synchronization to be able to point properly. 
which, you know, you sit there and you break it all down into these little parts. You're like, yeah, that's totally doable. But who actually put something like that together and shows it in execution? Um, so we're lucky enough, I think, to have even a little bit of footage showcasing this thing. Um, but it is unbelievable to see this in action with all of these cameras just perfectly, I'll call it dancing. Um, it is just absolutely incredible. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So we actually have never before seen footage of this. Michael, I stuck it in there. It's like your last input. Let's, uh, let's roll it and show everybody what, what DJ Deadmau5, one of the top DJs in the world did hacking together a solution that uses simpty time codes and MIDI, uh, control <laughs> as we're going to play like half of this video, not all of it, but go ahead and roll it, Michael. And let's, uh, let's show people what, what what's going on there. What's up guys, Paul Richards here with PTZ Optics and we are in Hollywood, California at the Palladium here to see inside. the Dead Mouse 5 Cube V3 Tour. If you guys know of Dead Mouse, he's one of the world's mm -hmm. largest and most popular right. DJs and he's an using PTZ speed. Optics cameras in his amazing new Cube, which is a DJ set. A lot of DJs are doing live streaming now. We're here also for TwitchCon in California. Let's take you guys inside. All right, so we're about to go backstage. Um, what's our Jack? And um, I mean, I mean, I <laughs> we're really excited. Hey, I'm Connor. I'm with CSP, and I'm explaining the cameras for the Cube V3. Taking the live data from our Cube, and when it gets to a certain degree of rotation and tilt, we actually send a command for the camera to switch presets. So we go from our preset, which is set for the cube in down position, to our preset for the cube in forward position. When the cube was moving down, because obviously the position of the camera is going to end up changing, that's when the preset that we have built into the camera actually ends up moving because of the cube moving. You never have to move the cameras at all, like manually? No. It's all done automatic? Correct. We're taking all four cameras. Uh, so we have three cameras on stage and one camera in front of house. They're coming into our Blackmagic Smart Video Hub and they're getting distributed to three separate machines, one for recording, two for live playback. We record all four cameras uh, for every show, and then the other three, cam all four cameras also get sent to each of our playback machines. You get live video in there? Yeah, that's live video. So as you see, I move it on the back screen, you can see. Inside touch designer? Yep. I've never seen that. Camera in the front, we have a camera on top, and then we have a camera behind. And those actually will, um, Joel picks and chooses what he wants for different scenes and they'll actually all right all right that's all we're gonna show okay i don't want to give away all of joel's secrets just wanted to share there's a little bit more on our website about that case study but yeah pff, talking about hacking a product on a spinning cube that's pretty crazy yeah yeah i mean you rare you hear people talk about little pieces of things like that but to actually see it in execution what a beautiful thing oh uh, just put a smile on my face to see that again. So, Matt, so much has happened. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about the effect of COVID-19. Uh, you know, uh, Andrew just talked about it, pushing the video industry forward two, three, four, five years. Um, how has it changed your perspective on what products that you're designing and engineering and, and what you're thinking about for the future? Obviously, you know, we released some new cameras. People are getting their hands on, getting to see those live demos. They're going to be shipping end of this week, next week, really soon. But what, what, what has inspired you? What have you seen out there? Were there any, is there any silver lining? Are there any good things that we could talk about? Um, what are you excited about for the video industry? It would have been nice to go to NAB and get our hands on all of this technology, but uh, at least we're here to live stream it. What are you excited about, Matt? Yeah, um, so I think a couple of people have touched on this. Um, I feel like, yes, it's accelerated things, you know, three to five years. And that's awesome from a making product, making solution standpoint. You know, we've been sitting here preaching for five years, 10 years, who knows, some people much longer than that saying, this is the way it's going to go. This is the way it's going to go. Isn't, you know, get ready for it, get ready. And it's, it's been, it's been building over time, but I, you know, 
this has made it happen overnight. Um, and what's really intriguing from my own perspective, I feel like is taking that step back and we've been preaching this message for so long, like this is the solution. This is what you should be doing. You should be looking at this. Well, now we're there. And it's the chance for all of us who have been preaching these messages to stand behind it, to really show people to stand behind the products, to make products that do enable this. Um, you know, we're no longer just preaching this is the future. The future is now. Um, we, we really, you don't get to seize an opportunity to, to try and assist people in this way very often. Um, so I think what's going to start to get to be interesting is how do you how do you start to cater products to enable some advanced features without requiring expensive hardware to go along with it? Um, I think that's going to be the most interesting challenge to start tackling at this point. <laughs> well, Matt, I think you hit the nail on the head. And, you know, when you originally, you know, started producing products for PTZ Optics, you know, the motto that we had at the office was broadcast quality made affordable. And um, I don't know if you noticed, we gave away a free camera today. And the gentleman who won from Oregon City uh, actually is using it to deliver telehealth information. Uh, you know, his family has been touched by a few rare diseases. And he goes to conferences to help share these conferences that would, you know, at one point, just be a few people in a room. But now it's available to the world and available on demand. And he's saving lives, I believe, um, and improving the world that we live in. So, and that just popped up out of nowhere, you know, I mean, yeah. just the, the amount of people that are able to do this and his, you know, touch on the PTZ optics cameras that you've designed is that they're easy enough for those volunteers that he relies on to operate them. And that's something I hear throughout all of our customers, whether it's a house of worship or, you know, a, a small team, a one-man production system. He was using Vima, Mimo Live, which has the camera control built in, but it's easy enough for someone to use, but high enough quality that they feel like what they're doing is engaging, it, you know, delivers the value, and it's worthwhile to be archived and saved and, and viewed later. Well, and, and one of the interesting things, and, and especially with what this gentleman's focusing on, um, it's a message he understands why people should care about this message. Um, and I think what, what's really important is regardless of what you're limited by in what your camera is uh, or what your computer is, that really the more important thing is making sure that it's a message that you're excited about. Because if you're putting out content in a message that you care about, um, People are going to resonate, even if even if you have to start in standard deaf quality. I don't see how anybody who cares about the message that you're broadcasting is going to find that off-putting. They're going to be patient. They're going to be willing to participate with you. Uh, and this is where the community building comes in. And that's really important. Um, you know, a lot of what this gentleman's doing, maybe these people aren't actually finding solutions, but to be able to connect with other people that understand what you're going through that can turn life into a whole new situation. Um, so, you know, it, it makes me very happy to hear about people doing things like that. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks for bringing that story actually. Yeah. And you know what? It literally just popped up out of the blue. I felt, I almost cried a little bit just to hear what has happened to his family and, and how he's using it. And that is just one person. Thank goodness. There is some good things happening in this world, um, and they do pop up quite randomly, unexpectedly. There's a silver lining to all of this in, in, in the world, and I do feel very lucky to be in an industry where um, we're able to help. Um, last Friday, we were um, raising money for a COVID-19 foundation uh, on our Stream Geeks channel, and we were using live streaming to get the message out. We hired some comedians. We did a little comic relief and we used YouTube to raise funds for the COVID-19 foundation at the United Way. So, um, you know, not only can these, and, and you know, something I'll echo that I spoke to Andrew Cross about that I'd love to hear you respond on. And Bill Mullen, the CEO of Starin told me this. And not only is 
you know, a necessity, the mother of invention, and everyone's forced to use this technology. But what I think we're going to see come out of this is that it's not uh, what you can do with the tools so much as what the tools do to you and how it changes your lifestyle and how you use them. So I was, you know, I think that people are going to come out of this saying, I'm more familiar with these tools. I can do this. And when they're sitting around with a group of their friends saying, how should we connect with the world? They're going to think that live streaming thing really worked. I think we should do that, you know, or a Zoom conference might be a good idea. And more and more, it will become natural, familiar, and common to be using this type of technology. Yeah. Um, so actually, that, that is a question I pondered myself for many, 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 many years, um, that exact thought pattern. And I feel like I've spent a lot of time thinking that it's the introduction of, of these features and you're learning to take advantage of them. Um, but I feel like that's a two-way street, really. Um, and it's the job of those making the solutions and the products to make sure that it's a product that caters to you to some degree. Um, you know, everybody's got different ways of trying to approach things, of how they view things, of how they think a message can best be portrayed. Uh, I think that tools that really help guide you to those right solutions um, are going to really ultimately be where people side. Uh, I don't think necessarily having the features is great. And having it so that you learn to take advantage of whatever the tool set is, is always a good thing. It never hurts to learn and take it further. Um, but I think when that product is able to integrate into your life to just improve things, um, it's offering just as much, if not more, benefit. All right. I can't take, I can't stay in a hoodie for this much longer. With with the, with how with how hot this place is, I'm impressed with how long you did make it. <laughs> hey, I I wanted to pull down the hacker. I can still hack without a hoodie. Okay, I think I can hack it. It'll be all right. But Matt, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. The next folks are live view, and the question I you know I've been thinking about with, with them a lot is and with online communications, working from home, I feel like a lot of people are empowered by what they can do from home, and they're thinking, geez. I can break the chain. I can yeah. work from home two days a week, three days a week. Why, why even go to the office, right? <laughs> um, I mean, I do think that that is going to become more normal. You know, there was a Gartner study of 300 CFOs who were saying, we're considering telling people to stay at home because we can reduce our office space. You know, we can keep it to essentials. Oh. And you take a step back, the, the reason always used to be, we're not really set up for that. That's what they'd often tell people, and they could support one or two people. But what we've seen is they've been forced into it. Um, they now have to support it. There is no more saying we need to get ready for this. They've proven they're ready for it. They've proven they can do it. They've had to. There's been no option. Um, so we're really at a point where this whole work from home concept is now part of working. Um, you know, it's no longer just this maybe sort of kind of add on. It's it's a part of our life now. Well, I hope for the better. Thank you so much for joining us, Matt. It's been a pleasure. Uh, everyone seems to love these new cameras, so my hat's off to you. The price point that you've set for the new NDI webcam is incredible. I had so much fun with it. I literally, this Friday, I have another alumni get together, and I just cannot wait to, to see everyone's faces when I zoom in with a webcam. It, it blows their minds. <laughs> It's funny how people just haven't seen it. They love it. It, it. it puts a smile on my face every time. What am I going to say? I can't lie. Thank you, Matt. Have a good rest All of your right. day. You too, and thanks for having me. My pleasure. Guys, the show is still going on. Hack the NAB Show 2020. We've got Live View. We've got Wirecast. We've got Epifan. We've got X Keys. We've got Matrox. We've got Wowza. We're going to hear from JB&A. And then there's going to be an amazing finale coming up soon. But stick around. 60 seconds. We'll be back with Live View. Here we go, folks.